alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hi everyone, nice to meet you all. Today, inshallah, we will start in the second session of quantitative chemistry. Mool calculations. Today, lesson is one of the most important lessons in your syllabus. If you are studying according to our GCSE syllabus, take care. At least you will have five marks for mool calculations in your exam, in each paper. And if you are studying according to ministry syllabus, your topic today is one of the most important topics. It will be repeated more than one time. It will be repeated in our year. It will be repeated in grade 11. So we are talking about one topic of the most important topics in chemistry, quantitative chemistry. Our lesson today, we will start to make collections of the main informations and all informations of quantitative chemistry. We will start to collect all the data of mole calculations in gases related to concentration, how we can calculate the number of moles, how we can calculate all of our informations in your syllabus, how you can calculate empirical formula and general molecular formula of a compound. Let's start together with the first information in mole calculations. At first, what's the meaning of mole? In our picture, we can see that we have one mole. Our mole equal to the number of atoms. Each one mole contains 6.022 times 10 raised to the power of 23 atoms. So, we can say that each one mole of substance contains the same number of atoms. We can say that each one mole contains the same number of atoms as 12 grams of carbon-12. So, one mole is the mass of particles, is the mass of elements or molecules contains the same number of particles as 12 grams of carbon-12. Each one mole contains the same number of particles equal to Avogadro's number. Avogadro's number is the number of atoms in one mole of substance. Avogadro's number equal to 6.02 times 10 raised to the power of 23 atoms. So each one mole contains the same number of atoms. Mass of one mole equals the relative atomic mass of an element, the relative molecular mass of molecule. One mole of sodium equals the relative atomic mass of sodium a R of Na equal 23 grams. One mole of magnesium equal the relative atomic mass of magnesium. A R of magnesium equal 24 grams. One mole of sulfur equal A R of sulfur equal 32 grams. Because we are talking about solids. But if we are talking about diatomic gas, each one molecule consists of two atoms. Take care. If we want to calculate one mole of substance, each one mole of molecule, each one mole of compound equals the relative molecular mass of the molecule, equals the relative molecular mass of the compound. For example, if we have one mole of sodium chloride, one mole of NaCl, equal relative molecular mass of sodium chloride, equal relative atomic mass of sodium plus relative atomic mass of chlorine. Sodium Na11, 
So we have 23. Chlorine, C, L, 17, 35.5. So we can say that the relative atomic mass of chlorine is 35.5. 23 plus 35.5 equal 58.5 grams. It is the relative molecular mass of sodium chloride. The following information are very important. Any information is written in black and red color are very important. Now we will calculate the relation between mass and the number of moles. We say that each one mole contains number of atoms. The number of atoms is Avogadro's number. And we say that each one mole contains the same number of atoms as 12 grams of carbon 12. So we can say that the relation between mass and number of moles, number of moles in small, equal mass m over the relative atomic mass AR for element, or relative molecular mass MR of molecule. So, we have the following relation. It is very important. Number of moles N equal mass in gram divided by the relative atomic mass for at AR or relative molecular mass of compound MR. So we can say that mass by gram equal number of moles times AR. Mass by grams of molecule equal number of moles times MR. We can know that the mass of one mole equal relative atomic mass of N element equal the relative molecular mass of molecule or the relative molecular mass of compound. It is a relation between the mass and the number of moles. This law is very important. The next one. How many moles are there in 60 grams of sodium hydroxide? At first, you must know. How can you calculate the unknown? By using the known information in your equation. At first, how many moles? So, required number of moles. N is unknown. Are there in 60 grams? So, mass of sodium hydroxide equal 60 grams of sodium hydroxide. We don't have any other information. We want to calculate N and we have mass. We studied the law to calculate number of moles. N equal mass over relative molecular mass of compound. We know the mass, but the relative molecular mass is still unknown. So we want to calculate MR. Relative molecular mass, we can calculate it by using the periodic table. In your exam, you must have copy of the periodic table. So, relative molecular mass of sodium hydroxide in AOH equal relative atomic mass AR for sodium plus AR of oxygen. Sorry, plus A. R for oxygen atom plus A R for hydrogen atom. 
All of these information are used for calculating the relative molecular mass of sodium hydroxide. So, we can say that number of moles n equal in mass over relative molecular mass. Relative molecular mass of sodium hydroxide we can calculate it by using the data booklet or by using your periodic table copy. Relative molecular mass of sodium hydroxide equal relative atomic mass of sodium plus relative atomic mass of hydrogen plus relative atomic mass of oxygen equal 23 plus 1 plus 16 equal 40 grams. Number of moles N equal mass over relative molecular mass. Our mass is 60, our relative molecular mass is 40. 60 over 40 equal one and a half moles. So our number of moles of sodium hydroxide in 60 grams of sodium hydroxide is one and a half mole. The next question. What is the mass of 0.5 mole of copper sulfate crystals? At first, our known information is N. Number of moles is half mole, 0.5 mole. And we don't have any more information. We want to calculate mass. M is required. M is unknown. We have only one equation and one relation we have studied till now. Number of moles N equal mass over relative molecular mass. So we can say that number of moles N equal mass over relative molecular mass. We want to calculate mass M equal N times MR. So mass equal number of moles times relative molecular mass. Take care. The relative molecular mass is unknown. We want to calculate it. You must remember the structure of hydrated copper sulfate from acids and phases chapter. We want to calculate the relative molecular mass of hydrated copper sulfate, CuSO45H2O. So the relative molecular mass of hydrated copper sulfate equal relative atomic mass of copper 64, relative atomic mass of sulfur 32, plus 4 times relative atomic mass of oxygen 4 times 16, plus 5 water molecules, 5 between brackets the relative molecular mass of water we have two hydrogen atoms two times one plus oxygen atom its relative atomic mass is 16. so the total relative molecular mass of hydrated copper sulfate is 250 grams in any chemical equation take care the equation must be balanced you must balance your chemical equation Number of moles is exactly the balance of your equation. Don't make any calculation in your equation if it is not balanced. Again, if you have any unbalanced equation, don't do any calculation in your equation. So, the first step is to balance your equation. The balance of your equation is exactly the number of moles involved in the equation. Now, for example, if we react iron plus sulfur to four iron sulfide or to four ferric sulfide, ferrous sulfide, FES, one mole of iron plus one mole of sulfur will form one mole of ferrous sulfide. Calcium carbonate, we start to heat it at very high temperature. We will have calcium oxide plus carbon dioxide. 
One mole of calcium carbonate will be heated at very high temperature to four one mole of calcium oxide plus one mole of carbon dioxide. Four moles of aluminium will react with three moles of oxygen to form two moles of aluminium oxide. So we can say that each four moles of aluminium will react with three moles of oxygen to form two moles of aluminium oxide. Any information you must memorize it. Okay. Now we will transfer to example three. What mass of aluminium oxide so required is mass M is unknown for aluminium oxide is produced when 9.2 grams of aluminium metal. So mass of aluminium equal 9.2 grams of aluminium. When you react completely with oxygen gas. From your example, we don't have any information except the mass of aluminium. And we know that aluminium will react with oxygen to form aluminium oxide. So aluminium react with oxygen to form aluminium oxide. Al2O3. Try to know how can you write the structure of chemical compound by using the oxidation state. Aluminium Al plus 3 oxygen is minus 2. By using cross, we have Al2O3. We must balance the equation. We say it is impossible to finish any calculation by using unbalanced equation. So, in our equation, we have one aluminum atom in reactants. In products, we have two aluminum atoms. We have two oxygen atoms in reactants, and we finished with three oxygen atoms in products. At first, we will start to balance oxygen. Why we will start with oxygen? Because we don't like odd numbers in equation. We don't like odd number in gas. So we can equal the number of oxygen by multiply the number of oxygen in this part times 3 on the other part times 2. By multiplying by 3, we will have 6 oxygen atoms. On the other part, we have 6 oxygen atoms. So just we have Al plus 3O2 will form 2Al2O3. We multiplied by 2. We will try to equal number of aluminum atoms. In reactants, we have 1 aluminum and we finished with 4 aluminum atoms. We have six oxygen atoms and we finished with six of oxygen atoms. So we want to balance number of aluminum atoms. Multiply by four. Multiply reactants by four. So we have four Al plus three O2 will form two Al2O3. We start with four moles of aluminum plus 3 moles of oxygen to form 2 moles of aluminium oxide. So we have finished balanced equation. But we still want to calculate mass of aluminium oxide produced. We don't have any information about aluminium oxide. But we have information about aluminium. We have the mass of aluminium used in the reaction. We know that number of moles N equal mass over relative molecular mass.
and it isn't allowed to use mass in calculation for balance equation but it is allowed to use a number of moles so we want to transfer mass of aluminium into number of moles number of moles of aluminium equal mass over relative atomic mass of aluminium our mass is 9.2 relative atomic mass of aluminium al is 26.9 approximately 27 so the number of moles of aluminium used in the reaction is 0.34 moles from the equation each four moles of aluminium will react with three moles of oxygen to form two moles of aluminium oxide so each unit of aluminium in the reaction equal 0.34 by 4 equal 0.085 so if i react 0.085 of aluminium it will produce two times 0.085 of aluminium oxide so aluminium oxide will produce two units two times 0.085 equal 0.17 mole so the number of moles of produced aluminium oxide is 0.17 mole. As we have number of moles of product, we can calculate the mass of product. Mass of product M equal N times MR equal number of moles in small times relative molecular mass of aluminium oxide. We have number of moles, but we don't have the relative molecular mass of aluminium oxide just by using the copy of your periodic table we can calculate the relative molecular mass of aluminium oxide we have two aluminium atoms two times a r of aluminium two times 27 plus three times the relative atomic mass of oxygen a r of oxygen so we have 3 times 16 equal 102 gram so the mass produced equal number of moles of 0.17 times relative molecular mass of our compound 102 equals 17.3 gram it is the mass of aluminium oxide produced from the reaction if you want to understand this question again repeat it and start to listen for the steps of calculation step by step in the next information how can we finish calculation involving gases the molar volume of any gas is 24 decimeter cubic so each one mole of gas equal 24 decimeter cubic at room temperature and pressure so we can say that one decimeter cubic equal one liter one decimeter cubic equal 1000 centimeter cubic number of moles of gas equal volume over molar volume number of moles equal volume over 24 decimeter cubic so if we want to finish any calculations for equation containing gases involving gases take care of the molar volume the volume of any one mole of gas equal 24 decimeter cubic so we can say that one decimeter cubic it is very important equal one liter equal one thousand centimeter cubic number of moles equal volume over molar volume number of moles equal volume over 24 decimeter cubic i said before any information in black and red color is very important in the following example we have 8 grams of sulfur are burned. What volume of sulfur dioxide produced? Sulfur dioxide is gas, but sulfur is solid. 
when we burn sulfur in oxygen gas it will form sulfur dioxide gas according to balancing the equation each one mole of sulfur will react with one mole of oxygen to form one mole of sulfur dioxide we start our equation with 8 grams of sulfur 8 grams of sulfur is our mass in this mole we want to calculate number of moles of sulfur number of moles n equal mass over relative atomic mass number of moles equal m over a r of sulfur number of moles of sulfur equal 8 over 32 equal 0.25 mole so we start our reaction with 0.25 mole of sulfur one mole will react with one mole so 0.25 mole will react with 0.25 mole of oxygen to form 0.25 mole of sulfur dioxide gas from the equation number of moles equal volume over molar volume if we want to calculate the volume equal number of moles times molar volume molar volume is 24 decimeter cubic at room temperature and pressure so number of moles equal volume over molar volume number of moles equal volume over 24 decimeter cubic we want to calculate the volume volume equal n times molar volume or 0.25 times 24 decimeter cubic so we have 6 decimeter cubic the next example empirical formula empirical formula is one of the most information in your cells empirical formula is the simplest formula that indicates just the ratio of elements in your compound again it is the chemical formula that reflects the atoms combined in the smallest wall number ratio again it is the simplest formula of your compound that indicates the ratio of elements in your compound but molecular formula it is the actual formula that indicates the actual number of atoms of each element in your compound for example if you understand the example it will be easy to differentiate between empirical formula and molecular formula our molecular formula c 6 h6 our empirical formula is ch how ch just divide by 6 divide by 6 so our empirical formula is ch okay molecular formula c6 H12O6. So we have formula indicates the actual number of atoms of each element in our compound. We have six carbon atoms, 12 hydrogen atoms, six oxygen atoms, glucose structure. Just we will divide by six. Six and six. So our empirical formula is C H. 2O. We have one carbon atom, two hydrogen atoms, and one oxygen atom. Question number two. One of ores of copper is the mineral chalcopyrite. Chalcopyrite in a laboratory analysis of a sample shows that 15.15 gram of chalcopyrite had the following composition by mass copper 5.27 iron 4.61 gram 
Sulfur is the only other element present. So we have three elements, copper, iron, and sulfur. Use these figures to find the empirical formula of chalk pyrite. How can we calculate the empirical formula of chalk pyrite of our copper ore? And we have no information except the total mass of our ore and the mass of copper and the mass of iron. And we have another element, it is sulfur. And he told you the relative atomic mass of sulfur is 32, relative atomic mass of iron is 56, relative atomic mass of copper is 64. Let's know how can we solve the following question. The answer we have is chalk pyrite. Chalk pyrite is 15.15 grams. We have copper iron and sulfur copper mass is 5.27 gram iron mass is 4.61 sulfur is unknown we can calculate it of course we can it is 15.15 minus mass of copper and mass of iron minus 5.27 plus 4.61 equal 5.27 gram it is the mass of sulfur to calculate the empirical formula just divide the mass or the percentage of compound by its relative atomic mass again to calculate the empirical formula just divide the mass of atom or divide the mass or percentage of your element in the compound by its relative atomic mass. So we have 5.27 divided by relative atomic mass of copper is 64. So we have 5.27 over 64. Mass of iron 4.61 divided by the relative atomic mass of iron is 56. We have mass of sulfur 5.27 divided by the relative atomic mass of sulfur. A R of sulfur is 32. Just by division, by using your calculator, we will have the following answer. 0 0.0823, 0 0.0823, 0 0.165. Divide all the ratios by the least value our least value is 0 0.0823 so divide by it it is divided by itself equal one divided by itself equal one 0 0.165 over 0 0.0823 equal two so each copper atom attached with another iron atom attached with two sulfur atoms so we can start to write our equation the empirical formula of the compound one copper one iron two sulfur atoms so our structure is c u f e s 2 it is the steps of calculating the empirical formula it is the simplest formula which indicates the ratio of each element in your compound and we can use it for calculating the molecular formula of compound we will try it later by using the relation between empirical formula and molecular formula and we solve with one example try to memorize it another time Then how can we calculate the percentage yield and percentage purity of product? We said in the last session, if we start to do chemical reaction, it is impossible to have 100% yield inside your lab. 
It is very, very hard. But we can do some accurate methods to increase our yield value. If we want to calculate the percentage yield equal, our actual yield divided by predicted yield times 100. For example, if I have one experiment inside my lab, you are doing the same experiment inside your lab, another one is doing another experiment. Each one of us will start to have percentage yield. For example, your percentage yield is 60%. My percentage yield is 80%. Another person percentage yield is 90%. So, the 90% is the most accurate person. He is the best person to do the experiment. He prepared the largest amount of the yield. And we try to do the same steps to increase our yield for us and for you. So we want to calculate the percentage yield of experiment. All of these calculations are related to industry. All of these experiments are related to economic. So we must have the greatest amount. We must have the greatest value. We must save our raw materials and we must have the great steel. If we want to create the percentage purity, if I started my reaction with impure substance, we want to calculate the mass of pure product divided by the mass of impure product times 100. If we want to calculate the purity of example, the mass of pure over the mass of impure times 100. We will understand it more and more by more equations. We will start to have example heating 12.4 grams of copper carbonate. So we have copper carbonate CuCO3. In crucible, we will start to heat 12.4 grams, only 7 grams of copper oxide were produced. What is the percentage yield of copper oxide? To calculate the percentage yield, we must calculate actual yield. We already have the actual yield. Take care, actual yield must be given for you in the exam. Actual yield is usually written, even if you want from you to calculate the actual yield. We have 7 grams of copper oxide. Predicted yield, we must calculate it. Predicted or expected yield, we will calculate it. Times 100. So, how can we answer our question? We start to heat copper carbonate. By heating, we will have copper oxide plus carbon dioxide. If we start to check the balance, we have one copper, one copper. We have one carbon, one carbon. We have three oxygen atoms, two plus one equals three. So we have balance in the equation. No need for making balance. So each one mole of copper carbonate will form one mole of copper oxide plus one mole of carbon dioxide. We are talking with moles. No grams are involved in calculations. So if we start with 12.4 gram, we don't know number of moles. It will produce seven grams. But we are talking about moles. So, we want to calculate the number of moles of copper carbonate to use it to calculate the expected number of moles of copper oxide. So, number of moles of copper carbonate equal mass over relative molecular mass. Our mass is 12.4. Relative molecular masses is still unknown. Relative molecular mass of copper carbonate, the MR of copper carbonate, it's copper, copper. 
relative molecular mass of copper carbonate will equal MR of copper carbonate equal AR of copper AR4 Cu plus AR4 carbon plus we have three oxygen atoms three times a or four oxygen so we have 64 plus 12 plus 3 times 16 equals 124 so we start to calculate number of moles 12.4 over 124 so we have 0.1 mole each 0.1 mole of copper carbonate will produce 1 mole of copper oxide and 1 mole of carbon dioxide. Each 0.1 mole of copper carbonate will produce 0.1 mole of copper oxide plus 0.1 mole of carbon dioxide. Percentage yield equal actual yield over predicted yield times 100 okay we start our reaction with 7 grams predicted mass is the predicted mass of copper oxide predicted mass of copper oxide we can calculate it from m equal n times mr our number of moles is 0.1 times relative molecular mass of copper oxide copper oxide we have a r4 copper 64 plus relative atomic mass of oxygen is 16 so we have 0.1 times 6 plus 4 10 we have 1 1 plus 1 equal 2 plus 6 equal 80 so 0.1 times 80 equal 8 grams it is the predicted mass of copper oxide produced so our predicted mass is 8 7 over 8 times 100 we have 87.5 percentage yield so we can calculate the percentage yield by calculating actual yield over predicted yield times 100 our actual mass of copper oxide we can calculate it by using the information of copper carbonate copper carbonate at first we calculate its number of moles by using the given data and we start to calculate the mass of copper oxide predicted and we have its actual mass times 100 so we have 87.5 percentage next question solution concentration we have different types of solutions we have concentrated and we have diluted solution solution concentration is measure how much solute how much solid is dissolved in the solvent how much solid is dissolved in the liquid of course not all the solutions have the same concentration for example if i have a glass of water and i start to add one spoon of sodium chloride and I have another same glass of water and I start to add 10, 10 spoons of sodium chloride. Of course, we will have two different solutions. One of them is diluted with low concentration and the other one is very concentrated with very high concentration. So, we can say that solution are described qualitatively by using concentrated and diluted we can see it in our picture we have diluted solution its color 
is pale color. We have concentrated solution with very dark color. So our concentrated solution will have a very large concentration of the solute compared to the amount of solvent added. We have diluted solution, we have very little solute compared to the amount of solvent. So you must know that we have two different informations for indicating our solution is diluted or concentrated solution. We will start to know how can we calculate the concentration of our solution. Concentration of solution C equal number of moles in divided over volume V. Concentration is Calculated by mole over liter or mole over decimeter cubic. So we can write that concentration equal mole per decimeter cubic. Number of moles divided by volume in liters or in decimeter cubic. Decimeter cubic is our method for measuring. Each one decimeter cubic equal one liter. Each one decimeter cubic equal one thousand centimeter cubic. So each one decimeter cubic equal one thousand centimeter cubic. Each one decimeter cubic equal one liter. Okay. Okay. Now we will transfer to. The last example nearly calculate the concentration of solution of sodium hydroxide. We want to calculate concentration C of sodium hydroxide, which contains 10 grams of sodium hydroxide. Take care, it is grams, not number of moles, so it is mass. Okay. In a final volume of 250 centimeter cubic. In our calculation, we must use decimeter cubic, not centimeter cubic, okay? And the same in gases. We must use centimeter, not centimeter cubic. We must use decimeter cubic. At first, our mass in grams, we must convert it into number of moles in. Number of moles N equal mass over relative molecular mass. Relative molecular mass of sodium hydroxide, we can calculate it. MR equal AR of sodium plus AR of oxygen plus AR of hydrogen. So, we can say that number of moles equal 10 grams over relative atomic mass of sodium 23 relative atomic mass of oxygen 16 relative atomic mass of hydrogen is 1 equal 0.25 moles our concentration number of moles by volume take care the volume you must convert it into decimeter cubic not centimeter cubic so number of moles is 0.25 mole per 200 50 divided by 1000. So our concentration is 1 mole per meter cubic. Another example. Solution of hydrochloric acid is titrated against a standard solution of sodium hydroxide. This equation we studied it before in acids and base neutralization reaction, titration reaction between hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide. It is found that 20 cm cubic of acid neutralized 25 cm cubic of 0.1 mole per meter cubic sodium hydroxide solution. What is the concentration of hydrochloric acid? Start to be with me step by step. The answer at first 
we have sodium hydroxide reacted with hydrochloric acid to form sodium chloride plus water. It is neutralization reaction. Our equation is already balanced. We have one sodium atom, one sodium atom, one chlorine atom, one chlorine atom, two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. We have two hydrogen and one oxygen. So each one mole of sodium hydroxide will react with one mole of hydrochloric acid to form one mole sodium chloride and one mole of water. So we can say that the given information is the volume and the concentration of sodium hydroxide. So we have concentration and volume of sodium hydroxide. We can use it to calculate number of moles of sodium hydroxide involved in the reaction. Our concentration equal number of moles over volume. So number of moles is required in equal CV. So equal 0.1, the volume in centimeter cubic must be converted into decimeter cubic by division by 1000. Equal 0.0025 moles. So, each one mole of sodium hydroxide will react with one mole of hydrochloric acid to form one mole of sodium chloride plus one mole of water. So, number of moles of sodium hydroxide equal number of moles of hydrochloric acid equal 0.0025 moles. Concentration of hydrochloric acid required C equal N over V. N, we already calculated 0.0025. The volume is given. It is 20 centimeter cubic. Convert centimeter cubic into decimeter cubic by division over 1000. So our concentration of hydrochloric acid is 0.125 mole per decimeter cubic. So we have finished our lesson today. I hope that you could understand it. If it is hard for you to understand our lesson, try to repeat the video again. Try to answer each question by your hand. Try to memorize that all calculations must be in moles. We are relating moles with moles, not mass with mass. We have mainly three or more information is given in our video. At first, we can calculate number of moles N equal mass over relative atomic mass of element or N over relative molecular mass of compound. We can start to calculate the number of moles of gas by using the relation number of moles of gas equal the number of moles of gas equal volume divided by the molar volume equal volume divided by 24 decimeter cubic because each one mole of gas equal 24 decimeter cubic we have finished the concentration c equal number of moles per volume number of moles per volume volume in decimeter cubic we have finished also the calculation of the empirical formula and molecular formula and we have example for calculating empirical formula and molecular formula we differentiate between concentrated solution and diluted solution all of this information must be in your head arrange it to use it in solving problem in the next session inshallah we will start to have examples and solving a lot of problems related to mole calculation. Thanks for watching our video today. I hope that you understand it well. If you can't understand it from the first time, repeat the video again. We don't forget to give us like and share and don't forget to send the video to your friends. Thanks for watching and make subscribe for our video to see more videos. And if you want to memorize the relative molecular mass and relative atomic mass, you will find the link for the video in the description box. Thanks for watching. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.